Okay, this is the emotional content session. So, as part of being a chess player, just talking for myself here, is once we've done all of the answer process in terms of looking at attacking the key spaces, attacking the king's area, attacking higher pieces with lesser pieces, doing your four move calculation, doing the potential value or viability of the move. So out, once you've done all of them, then you'd think obviously that it would be over because um, how much calculation can you do? As I've said is basically, now we're hitting like the why factor. We want to throw in the emotional content in there because logically all of those concepts, they are logical, uh, nice processes to have and basically they help to keep you steady and work with the processes of chess so in that sense for me the emotional content needs to kick in to drive these logical thoughts that you've put through into your mental roller roller decks and that is the one that makes you make the move nothing else that emotional content so in these games um, we're basically just covering how and why I've made my particular moves after all of the um, other decisions have been made so we're playing as black here it's a 30 minute game and this opponent is uh, 15 1582 but they're they're close to the 1600 map so again also using the characteristics of the rating session that we recently did again add add that into the answer process that gives you then a story about the rating levels and what you would expect from them so this this helps to drive the emotional content session because without that, you're not really going to have any other research. You're just going to have your logical stuff, which is very process driven in a sense. And you're not really going to have any emotional content. The actual rating sessions that we did was to get us familiar with the rating styles and rating systems, how ordinarily in general they play. So we understand for our own rationale as to what each level does. As we mentioned before, not what a grandmaster says, not what's written down in somebody's book about what they think a level should be. Yeah, it's this is your own experience of what you think a level should be and can play like um, the pluses and the minuses. So when it comes to it in the game, you can then make an appropriate decision or a better decision. It might not be the most perfect decision, but based on the factors that you know about that play, that type of play, this is like a 1582 getting close up to um, 1600. Now we know they have issues in terms of castling. We know they have issues with working their pieces together based on from my own experience. Yeah, so, and also they have not a god complex but um uh, uh, they have moments of superiority in the game where they believe they're coming out with some masterful um, sort of position play which then upsets their rhythm because they only do maybe one or two movements towards doing this masterful move and then because their position is as good as they thought it was they end up having to backtrack and lose tempo because of that so that's what the kind of stuff that we know about 1500s, especially coming up to the 1600 mark. So I had that in my mind as I'm playing in the back of my head. Um, and just basically from the start, just looking at, let's see how they open. And they open with, you know, this move here. I mean, it's, uh, it's very risky at the best of times and when i see players play this move i say to myself well you've opened up your kingside area i know people chomp at the bit to try and blast away at the kingside area but instantly i'm going well your king's unprotected but i aren't going to go and attack it you know 
Uh, there are moves that you can try and do, you know, bringing the queen up here, feeling like, oh yeah, I've got his king, you know what I mean, and I've got the pawn and all that sort of stuff. But in the longer term, it doesn't really work because all it does is just push this pawn down here, doesn't it? Yes, it's opening more space around this kingside area, so he's probably not going to go and castle. But then you're having to move your queen again. Yeah, so you're having to move your queen back or move it down somewhere. So you're losing a bit of tempo, you're not really developed. You've de developed more one piece than they have, but really and truly, I'd probably save that. So we brought the knight through as usual and at this stage I'm thinking okay it's very brave so it's a kind of 1500 thing you know it's doing like the one punch thing there and then it's waiting for the next double punch you know and sorry well one punch and then another punch and then it's like okay I'm 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 done I, I've got nothing left because my position isn't any good so we, we just leave the pawn just standing there and now he's come out with another big gun you know bishop coming here so this is like his two punch um two punch attack pawn here bishop here i'm thinking well you've done your punch with your pawn you ain't done anything with it so it's kind of a waste of a tempo then he's bringing this bishop out here attacking this pawn here i'm like going okay let's see if it's improved your position so based on the experience of trying to understand the rating levels i can tell myself a story for this game especially for the longer games got more time to really think about well okay just based on what i know he's going to come out with a two punch combination and i'm hoping he dries up straight from that point on so i developed the knight all pretty straightforward stuff i'm attacking the pawn because if the pawn is not defended then i will take the pawn but i'm also making space for my king to go and castle as we know so they bring the knight through now so this to me is the one where it kind of dried up because i'm like still thinking you've got this but you're attacking this pawn you're attacking this pawn well, why have you come out with such big movements your position really hasn't improved from doing that and i think this is just a standard opening but for me emotionally in the game i, I like to treat each opening as it's an individual opening so that i can tell the story time and time again and it's might be the same story but it all depends on the person's rating yeah or their experience or whatever it is that i know about their movements on the board if they did these moves and i didn't know their rating i would then be saying okay this is a two punch combination it's done one here it's done nothing nothing with it it's done one here it's got nothing with it there's nothing supporting that attack there's nothing supporting this attack so what is the point that's what i'll be saying so I push my pawn up now, obviously as we know, I do like this move here, you know, I do like this move, um, we do like to tantalise the queen sometimes as well, especially if it's um, all jammed in. So it's got rationale and reason behind, so emotionally I'm thinking, well I don't need to worry about this position because at the end of the day, it looks like he's punched himself out, all based on the next move, let's see what he does. <laughs> so then we see the pawn push here looking to prevent something that isn't actually even on the cards yet at all you know usually that's done for stopping this bishop attacking the knight my pawns blocked the bishop so this fell into line quite nicely with the two punch combination two punch combination that 1500s to 1600s usually um get into play so now all i've got to wait for is no castling so i'm hoping that he doesn't go and castle so far he's fallen into the trait of a 1500 quite nicely um what type of 1500 is he is he a 1500 that is like a 1300 player or is he a 1500 jumping onto 1600 wants to try a little bit of something different and new and he might get lucky with that something different and something new so i've got to gauge what type of 1500 they are so we bring our bishop through looking to castle looks like we're going to castle before them and he does a pawn move here it's basically uh, my heart almost sank obviously i don't see the gauge bar um when i'm playing the game but even the gauge bar is kind of agreeing with us here at this moment anyway so they've done a pawn move another pawn move there's no attack there's no development there's no 
king's safety you know protect my king that type of thing so he's falling in quite nicely into the 1500 playing as a 1300 so he's dropped down the levels now so now in my head i'm playing a 1300 but i've still got to keep playing so now i've got to adjust my mental roller decks and say okay if he's playing as a 1300 1300s now definitely don't like castling they might like a bit of an attack every now and then just to make it look good you know so be aware they may come out and try some funky sacrifice for a funky position so that's what i'm expecting from like a, a 1300 this guy's a 1500 playing like a 1300 just making sure we're clear so we capture this pawn seeing as it's doing nothing and they start pushing through the center so we're, we're expecting some sort of attack thing now because as far as i'm concerned they're like a 1300 level which is you know there's no slant on the levels it's just so that i can understand the behaviors that are coming at me so we grab this pawn here now we grab the pawn because we liked this picture ages ago you know where you grab the pawn here and then when the knight grabs then you can push onto the bishop here like that as i did it i thought i don't know if that's right you know <laughs> um um it felt good it felt good because obviously i could get the pawn in there onto the onto both of the knight and the bishop but then i did think well this seems to be something missing but i continued with it anyway because i felt emotionally involved in it it felt right so we took so we did all the over calculations ahead of time as well you know uh, but then it came here and what we were saying earlier about well we can expect the 1300 to come out with something crazy you know because it dropped down the level from 1500 to 1300 in my mental rolodex and when they did this i got the shock of my life I didn't get to play out the move you know that i'd um, put in my head so it did catch me by surprise for a minute but then when i pulled myself together from the shock of it all i was like oh 1300 definitely going down probably me I, I don't even really want to say 1200 because the 1200s are a little bit more careful i know they're, they're less experienced but more this is more 1300 bit because he's he's got up to 1500 for a reason hasn't he anyway we kept him at 1300 with this so we captured and then the queen comes down and attacks as well way way too arty isn't it absolutely way too arty because i'm thinking yes it looks awesome but once this small piece attacks this higher piece the knight that was looking to take the knight off the board it really isn't going to have that tempo to take the knight off the board either so we'd be able to take this knight back if we chose to do so so we gladly just pushed the smaller piece attacking the higher piece and they moved back obviously we're not keeping the knight there with his two on one so we grab and he takes the pawn off the board with the queen so he's kind of overworking the queen a little bit now just for a pawn he could have actually got the knight back with the queen you know gaining more material back but for a piddly little pawn which it can be defended obviously he can push this pawn here onto the bishop um but you know it's kind of small potatoes really compared to what they could have got so we brought the bishop through gauge bar still on our side here minus 7.5 so they grab the knight with the pawn so now bring the bishop through looking for space to actually start attacking their king with the rook or the queen so at this stage genuinely still in the game i'm trying to work my pieces together as best possible have a look at this little this little man here the king has not castled at all it's not safe it's definitely fall, fallen into the 1300 mark i'm actually putting 1250 now yeah 1250 because of the fact of definitely the queen taking the pawn just to put a check on the king could have taken the knight probably been in a better position it's left the king home alone not developed any of his pieces so it's kind of getting worse for them so i would i'd have to put them as 1250 now so they're a 1500 playing as a 1250 so my emotional content is really going through the roof 
but it's making me focus even more so on the weaknesses rather than doing nugatory pieces of work so the knight comes out looking to maybe go and castle but once we put the check on the king then there's no movements for his king then at that point he could block with his bishop which he does so now we're doubling up on the bishop so you would think that he would try and get something else there but i don't think that anything can actually go there so he does castle so we can take the bishop with a check and then take the queen off so at this stage now you could say well he, he could grab something back he's only down two minor pieces and it's not impossible so we look to look at our blind spots and this was the game where I, I said patience i want to practice patience here patience throughout all of these emotional content games i want to play patience because the other side of emotional content is that you make moves faster because you, f you feel you're winning, excuse me, feel you've got an advantage. So your emotional content, your heart starts pumping and you're going, yes, I've got them, I've got them. And I said I wanted to practice everything that I've learned from, from chess. And in these games that I'm playing, these six games, the element of patience was there it was key for me to practice that because that is my feeling of being in advantageous positions but then losing that advantage so you've seen the training videos that i've put myself through to try and get rid of that losing the advantage thing and it's it's working it's getting there i'm still working on it it's good you know it's nothing's going to be perfect but yeah i'm working on it and it feels a lot better I said patience i've got plenty of time to think of my moves think of the appropriate things what are the weaknesses in my game my game yes tunnel vision once i'm in advantage then i lose out on the fact of what the opponent can actually do to me i said this is not happening in this game it's not happening in any more games <laughs> he says okay so they push through onto the bishop I must admit I was quite shocked with this bishop, this pawn move, but I did have space for my bishop to actually go to, actually taking a little piece of uh, material with me. So it's advancing the bishop, it's grabbing a piece of material, but not just for the sake of grabbing material, it is actually trying to manage this square here, if need be, sliding back, could come and attack the knight again, which would be quite beneficial, yeah, because it's then facing the king area. So there's elements there and those were the choices that I was thinking about when I was in this position but I did say I think the idea is to actually be nearer to the king area could bring the bishop here and attack this square why not bring it attack a higher piece at the moment obviously the higher piece is not going to stay there then maybe we can attack a lesser piece so we bring our rook up supporting the rook now rooks like to own the open file so it's feeling fairly meaty at this moment so he's attacking our bishop i'm thinking that's a good touch it's a smaller piece attacking the higher piece doesn't really improve their position on the board though so we grab grab reducing down his material he's only got a knight so we can now start to hedge in the king a little bit just moving the bishop out of the way of the pawn see even with all of these materials that i've got on the board i could afford for the pawn to take the bishop but no i'm playing patience more material i've got the more i can squish the king so he moves the knight we bring the rook down and at that point it was a resignation so that was a nice game there of using the emotion uh, the emotional patience and using the categorizations of the ratings to really understand what is actually going on here and those helped drive the actual moves that was made that were made and basically played on the weaknesses of the opponent using all of the knowledge from that rating style that they have and all the concepts that we have within the answer as well so that's the emotional content that's the reason the reason rationale behind it 
So we'll go on to the next one, looking at the emotional content, looking at how we're reading the opponent and what solutions we're bringing from there. And always, 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 always using the answer process as the logical process for us and then bringing in the emotional content based on what we have read about the opponent. Okay, this is the next game in the emotional content. Playing as black against 1534. So the lower end of the 1500. So as we've discussed, um, we know the makeup of the 1500. And are we now waiting to see, are they a 1300 masquerading as a 1500 or are they like a 1600 master masquerading as a 1500 we shall see so we blocked off the pawn feeling okay about that situation develop the knight obviously attacking the pawn but freeing space up for the king as we know they develop their knight looks fairly safe so we grab the pawn now this again remember the last game where i said oh i've seen this move and i like this move and i want to get this in here you know once they go here like this and i thought well i'm going to grab this pawn but yet again something felt different about this position something felt missing but my emotional content after my observation i thought there's nothing major that can go wrong but i did feel there was something missing when i did it and that's the emotional content I, I, did, I, I felt it was okay to do but I felt there was something missing so grabbed so we pushed the pawn onto the bishop then the bishop put an attack on so a smaller piece can attack the high, um, higher piece so he's got two pieces under attack by two minor pieces but even when I did this move I felt emotionally involved in it I felt yeah that's okay I still felt there was something missing from the initial first move and I was wondering what it was. So they grabbed the pawn, so we grabbed back with the bishop. I'm still feeling okay about this and I'm still feeling I missed something but has my opponent not actually seen what I missed? Anyway, so it carried on. The knight then jumps back and attacks the pawn but the queen is actually defending the pawn. So nothing to worry about there. So I feel that it's appropriate to bring the bishop through now potentially just getting this knight off the board because I'm looking at the material on the board and he's not developed his knight, he's not developed his bishop his king is still in the middle of the board I know I've not got castled yet but I've got tempo to be able to do that so he moves his knight obviously looking for tempo for the castling so at this stage I'm thinking ah oh, that's not too bad this pawn is still stuck in the middle so I think that's what was missing throughout me doing this particular move. Something was missing. and But it felt okay. It felt okay. When there's something missing though, it, it does send you a bit out of kilter. But anyway, we castled King Safety. They attack our bishop. We bring the bishop back. And we bring the bishop back again. We feel this is okay based on the logical uh, conclusions that really there's nothing meaty coming towards us our pieces are developing quite nicely the opponents seem to be a bit slow so then they castle so i got the shock of my life when they castle because i expected them to be you know still continuing the punches you know because they had done quite a few punches before they went and castled but none <clears throat> none of them really have improved their position on the board it still looks very clusterish so we bring the bishop through, x-raying through to the uh, queen. And then we capture the knight because we feel the cluster needs to be damaged. Let's open this baby up and take advantage of the fact that he's not developed his bishop and this pawn has not developed. So it's slow in developing in the middle. Usually we like to be managing what's happening around the center, um, but the opponent hasn't done anything to really make us manage. So we're just sat kind of waiting for them see how we danced around the 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 framework of the center so like we said we don't control the center we never try and control the center we we like to manage the area around 
the centre. So the queen takes, so bring the rook through now, we feel okay with that because the rook's supporting but it's also facing the queen if anything kicks off. And they move the piece again, move the queen again, I didn't really know what that was until I realised he has a 2 on 1 on the pawn here. So we bring our knight up attacking his queen, his queen could take the pawn if it wanted which it does do, and we take back. Knight takes and we grab so we're now on his rook did that knight move help them single kind of attacks bring the bishop down now looking for it to have a multi-purpose um, activity with the diagonals especially coming up here or choices at the end of the day so they push their pawn opening their bishop so we bring the knight back because we feel it's going to get kind of trapped around there because the rook is going to be attacking it but also it gives good pliability um, viability towards attacking here with the check on the king also on the bishop so the bishop moves so we move the knight and gauge bar doesn't like that move but what we're looking for is here nice little cheap move so then it's uh, putting an x a little bit of a fork on the two rooks so that's why we moved there because we felt that was all right there wasn't really any major dangers major danger would be if we kept our knight up in that area for too long because i could sense it potentially was going to get trapped so it brings the bishop back now which is protecting that key square and the rook is also attacking the knight so i have to bring it back could have brought it no, I thought that was the only space that was fairly decent for it. So now we've blocked off their pawn with our uh, pawn. His knight is in the center of the board. It looks like a nice position though, actually. It's just that it doesn't have any protection on it. So we could look to give it a little bit of a tickle. And it moves. So it's gone to somewhere it doesn't want to go to. So now we've got the bishop attacking the knight now. So he supports it with a smaller piece. We grab double the pawns in front of the king. All simple stuff. Now we're charging, attacking the pawn doesn't defend the pawn i don't think there was anything that could defend the pawn so positionally the attacks that the opponent had done he ended up being chased around the board lost any type of position that he may have had during that part of the game and now they're sort of struggling to find their feet but they do have open files to actually look to take charge of so whilst they're doing that we can attack a pawn so he's come down for the pawn so we can support with the rook um, key things I've learned throughout all of these exercises is that patience thing and rooks don't really want to be supporting pawns that type of thing you know but if you're of the mindset that you're never going to do that then you're not really going to advance your game so I've learned that the hard way you know I, I still say it now oh, rooks shouldn't be supporting this or queen shouldn't be supporting a pawn and all that sort of stuff but I do actually make the move to support it if there is nothing else that I can do. I had the option logically of taking his pawn here, then he could take our pawn and I thought well there's a slight imbalance there because he's going to have a pawn majority on this side so I would be giving him the pawn majority on that side. So this is why I didn't really want to go with that aspect. So we grabbed and now we could bring the rook across looking to try and get rid of his pawns but at the same point just trying to get my pawn up I know it's not going to get very far because he's got the two roots that are going to challenge it but it makes them think about something that they don't want to do so his rooks come looks like it's kind of supporting his pawn like I say rooks really don't like doing that sort of stuff so we challenge the rook takes and we take so we challenge the rook again and start pushing the pawn up so now he's got a two on one with his rooks. So it's going to be like a pawn for a pawn. If they take the pawn and we can take and then he moves. So we move the pawn up now looking for basically a rook exchange. So we take that off, take it off. And we've got a pawn majority on the king side. Queen side. King side, sorry. Yep. So feeling fairly happy with this position. I know it's got zeros on there. Basically saying it's a draw. But felt fairly comfortable with this if playing normal normal human type players they're probably going to struggle trying to gain an advantage especially when they've got 
a poor majority against them. So they pushed down, not saying I played this perfect, but felt comfortable in this arena. So look to exchange off, he doesn't exchange, that's fair enough, so it brings the king down. Again, I think that was a big loss in tempo because really and truly, because he doesn't have like a center pawn, this king isn't doing anything here. It can't advance. So we attack their pawn with our rook, gives us space to capture. Um, all the while, I'm, I'm just saying, okay, well, the person's like 1534, um, their ending game is probably round about 1350 because they didn't transition from the opening stage was 15 15 ish but it, it then really dropped dramatically uh, you know with 14 50 ish they did like the one two and that was it and you, you physically saw it then after that they were backtracking the pieces were being attacked and they didn't find good positions their pieces definitely weren't working together and you might look at the board now and go oh yeah but you've only got one more piece than well two more pieces than them one two three four yeah but the point of chess is about that position yeah who has got the advantage that's what you're looking for so it doesn't matter how many pieces you've got on the board it might look like oh yeah they're doing really well but positionally and um, this is a matter of a few moves away from actually gaining advantage proper advantages the king's now hiding in the corner so we can just keep pushing he's putting a check on we can just keep pushing let's give him the pawn there but their king isn't going anywhere with that pawn so now we can grab and move the king just waiting for his king now to come into the open in this position here is not very clever because we can come across so he's going to lose his rook so we get the queen then we take so that's all pretty straightforward now it's a tempo count so we just need to get opposite and just being patient and careful and then at that point the opponent resigned so again in my head looking at the slide down of the skills of the opponent going through yes we've done all the logical sort of stuff so we don't need to go through that now we're into a new age thing with the emotional side of things which is looking at the standard of play that you're expecting looking at what is actually happening on the board and then evaluating in your own brain as to okay what can you expect next and what can you do against that type of behavior and that's what we did in this um, particular example here is looked at what the player is expected to do as a 1500 then looking at what they're actually delivering 1400 ish early on and then what are they capable of doing later on in the game drop to around about 13 something um, for the end game and it might have even dropped to like 12.50 for the end game because most definitely there was no pieces um, pulled together um, in terms of supporting each other mostly single attacks so the position on the board was kind of shot early on Okay, we're just practicing the emotional content. So emotional content can comprise of quite a lot of things. Uh, in terms of my understanding, keeping it basic, it's around if I feel something, that's like an emotional thing. If I'm urging the game to, you know, I need to speed up, I need to speed up. That's like an emotional content in there. So keeping it as basic as possible, that's the general understanding, as far as I'm aware, of where the emotions kick in. So you've done all your processing in the faster games, most definitely the emotional side of your game really kicks in because you just you just have to go on a whim or a prayer, yeah? Um, in terms of, okay, my pattern recognition, the processes I've set in place for the answer process, they're all working in the background like Norton security. But removing emotion from your play does make you a little bit static and a little bit sort of um, rigid. So this is why the emotional side is really key because that is the real driver for your personality actually in the game. Okay, 
so you don't have to verbalize the actual emotion um, it's really for yourself to really look at where you're at in the game then really be picking out what moves are now the turning point in terms of nice and simple but time's ticking that's an emotional thing you're thinking you need to keep up to time um, position is my position good uh, do I really have anything here you know all these sort of questions they tag they pull at the emotional side of your game and that's what makes us flag that's the type of stuff that makes us lose time um, get even worse positions because we don't know what to do next so we get really anxious then so it, then there's a whole build up of stuff and then when we look at the evaluation afterwards then we go why did I make that move it's because you have the emotional fog yep it's like a snowball of emotional entanglement and if we can try and manage that within the game to then get a more patient outlook to the game you, you see a lot more it's really quite hard doing it because obviously if you're in a position where you can't really you don't really see the quality of the the position or you just don't know what to play next it feels like it's a draw but how is it a draw it feels like it's a win but how is it a win and you just can't see those positions that's the time where your emotional state really kicks in and it can either make you or break you. So we're going to jump into a game here, this one aborted, so let's go in.